The future of several local landmarks may be at risk, putting jobs and events booked far in advance in jeopardy. It's Wednesday evening. I'm Amber Kariska. But the announcement by a group that owns multiple properties across the area is notable for what it doesn't say. Peoria-based KDB Group alluding to some tough decisions going forward. And John Schoenheider is live in front of the Scottish Rite Theater with more on what it means for these projects. John. Yeah, that's right, Amber. We just received a release this afternoon from the KDB group right here. You can see a pretty short release, not too much detail in there. But there is one paragraph in particular that cites two pretty po prominent projects that the group has been working on over the past couple years. One of them being the Betty Jane Brimmer Performing Arts Center in Peoria Heights. And then this building right here, the Scottish Rite Theater in downtown Peoria. Now, both of those buildings have a pretty long and storied past, both of them dating back as far as a century. And they were purchased in 2019 by KDB founder Kim Blickenstaff for renovations. Now, the Betty Jane reopened that same year with the Scottish Rite coming two years later after some pandemic delays, that is. According to a release from the group as of 2019, Blickenstaff invested $6 million into the theater project. But in today's release, the group says that they are, quote, reevaluating the scope of existing and future operations of all projects and properties in the Peoria area. Now, they say that decision impacts operations at the theater and the Brimmer Center, but the release does not go into detail about those changes or whether this will impact any other properties or investments going forward. The last scheduled events on the two venues' calendars are for January 14th, but anything beyond that right now is uncertain. We even received an email from a bride that she got from the KDB group informing her that the reservation at the Betty Jane that she had was canceled because of this announcement. Now, KDB owns other properties, including the San Cody Lakes Resort, and has multiple projects under development in Peoria Heights, including a boutique hotel and a park project as well. Now, we have made multiple attempts over the course of the day to get in touch with the KDB group, with the Scottish Rite, with the, Betty, uh, with the Brimmer Center as well, multiple attempts to get in touch with other people affiliated with those projects too, and to no avail at this point in time. But we're going to continue trying to get in touch with some people. Right now, the facility closed, the windows dark, not much going on here. Really has not been much going on today overall as we try to get in contact with representatives, but we're going to continue to do so as the week goes on, and we'll continue to try and keep you updated on the air and online as we learn more about this situation. Amber, back to you. A low chance of survival. That's what doctors said about a Peoria woman earlier this month after a crash. Now the family is coping with the aftermath and what happens next. Here's John Schoenheider. On January 9th, 20-year-old Heaven Loza was driving to meet friends in Kankakee. Her mom, Destiny, talks to her every day, but hadn't heard from her by the afternoon. Finally, she got a phone call, but it wasn't from Heaven. It was like it wasn't true. It was like, when am I going to wake up from this bad dream? Heaven was airlifted to a local hospital after crashing into the back of a semi-truck. Destiny rushed to Chicago, a drive she's made every day since from her home in Marseilles. Multiple bones shattered, spleen removed, and brain swelling from the bleeding, putting her in a coma. Doctors said her chances for survival were slim and that they won't know the extent of the brain damage until she wakes up. Maybe a possibility that she could pass, but I prayed every day, every night, so that she could be able to heal quicker and be able to see our family once again. In Peoria, her partner Salvador has become a single parent. Currently unemployed, he's looking after their two children, four-year-old Julian and two-year-old Hazel. Some nights, he says, the children wake up from nightmares, crying out for their mother, who they haven't seen in weeks. But Salvador isn't giving up hope. I could see our, ourselves getting old and, um, you know, becoming married at some time and later in the future. Doctors plan to move Heaven to a different facility in the coming days to take her off the respirator. After that, she'll go to a long-term rehabilitation hospital to relearn to walk, talk, eat, and live. It's a long road ahead for Heaven. But after beating all the odds, her family says they're ready for anything. I don't care how she comes home, but she's coming home with me. You know, I'll take care of her for the rest of my life. 
I don't care. In Peoria, John Schoenheider, 25 News. John, thank you. So far, state police only tell us the semi-truck turned left in front of Heaven when she ran into it from behind. It's unclear who, if anyone, was at fault. Heaven's insurance, though, won't cover her hospital expenses, but her mother did set up a GoFundMe account. You can find that information on our website, 25newsnow.com. Breaking news this hour, a father stands convicted of killing his wife, son, and a friend on a holiday normally reserved for celebrating. Clifford Brewer's triple murder trial in Livingston County is finished. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Amber Kriska. The jury deliberated for less than three hours, and they say Brewer is guilty in a Christmas Day shooting in 2019 that killed three people. John Schoenheider has been following this trial throughout, all the way dating back to last week in Livingston County. He is live for us this afternoon in Pontiac. And John, you just had a chance to talk with attorneys to get their reaction to these verdicts. That's absolutely right, Tyler. Amber, the verdict is in, and the jurors did not take long to deliberate at all. Coming out after less than three hours in the back room, and their verdict? Guilty on all six counts of Clifford Brewer killing his wife, Shirley, his son, Christian, and their family friend and neighbor, Norman Walker, on Christmas Day in 2019. Now, this all followed a fiery closing argument session from both sides. Jurors returned um, afterwards, and the verdict came to prosecutors and defense attorneys say that these things on the each end really happened. Prosecution went first, noting the number of times Brewer changed his story to control the narrative in his favor. They say it was his effort to hide important details. And the defense rebuked that, demonstrating how Shirley Brewer, Clifford's wife, committed the crime, saying it was a murder-suicide. And that includes a live bullet found at the scene, which they say was ejected by someone like Shirley, who lacked experience with weapons and firearms. Now, ultimately, jurors rejected the defense's claims and convicted Brewer. You know, obviously not something that we're, we're going to celebrate, but we, we are thankful that the jury uh, saw through the defendant's lies. We're, we're thankful that the uh, jury uh, got it right, that he's going to be held accountable for his actions. So, um, very thankful for that. Now, the jurors did find Brewer again guilty of all six counts of first-degree murder. And we also spoke to the defense attorneys involved in this case who say while they are disappointed with the verdict, they say they do plan to appeal. One other mentioned from the prosecution side, we heard that while justice was served in this case, that still is three innocent lives lost here in Livingston County and countless other lives affected by those who were connected and loved them. But Right now, what we do know is that October 5th is set to be Brewer's sentencing date, where he faces life in prison without parole. From Pontiac, I'm John Schoenheider. Tyler Amber, back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, John. Trying to help as many people as possible. That is the mission of a local man who, after nearly two decades in prison, wants to follow a new calling. Yeah, and, and he isn't getting his business off the ground without some help. John Schoenheider shares his story and how he's spreading his faith, John. Amber Tyler, Stephen Snook grew up in extreme poverty during his childhood in Danville, Illinois. After years of crime, he was arrested by the DEA at the age of 26, sentenced to more than 20 years in federal prison. For some, that sounds like the worst punishment possible, but for him, it was an opportunity. This is the home where Stephen Snook grew up, or what's left of it. An upbringing of poverty and abuse that would lead into a life of crime and 19 years in federal prison. That time brought a change in perspective. I was trapped in that cycle and I didn't know any way out. There was nowhere else for me to turn, so I turned to the Lord. Snook finding faith behind bars, speaking and converting fellow convicts within solitary confinement. Through his mission, he found revelation. That made a powerful impact. You know, they would become hungry for God. If I could get them to become hungry for God and get them to start fasting and praying more often, the, the change was radical. Snook re-entered the world with a purpose. That led him to Peoria Next, a startup incubator accessed through Bradley University. You could tell that he was really focused on, I want to make this thing happen. His idea? keeping the scripture at the center of the household through digital photo frames. He says it came to him in a dream while serving his time and became a priority once he got out. 
But the world had changed since Snooks saw it last. Little did I know in that early call, right, that Stephen uh, would be coming into a world that, you know, he hadn't uh, experienced for 20 years, right? The, the iPhone wasn't here. Emails are new. Mike Stubbs at Peoria Next took him in, showing him the ins and outs of starting a business in the modern world. It shows that no matter who you are, right, you can create a company, and you can create a new life, you can create a new opportunity. Snook wants to thrive outside the frame. For me, it's bigger than a business. This is a mission. This is something that I've dedicated my life to. He's in the process of writing a book he began while doing time and has shared his life story with over a dozen podcasts. All of that just nine months after getting out. What I'm trying to do with everything that's in me is, is help change in an impactful and positive way as many lives as possible. Through my life story, through the scripture frames, um, opportunities to speak with people about how the Lord has changed my life. Tomorrow is Stephen's first Thanksgiving as a free man since 2002. On the eve of the holiday, I asked him today what he was most grateful for in light of everything that he's experienced. And he told me the biggest message he has is to not take your family for granted and enjoy the time that you have with them here and now as much as possible. Two of the AFC's very best, the Bills and the Bengals, went head-to-head -head last night to determine home field advantage in the playoffs. But it wasn't the game itself that captured America's attention. Instead, it's what happened in the middle of that game. Good Tuesday evening. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Amber Kriska. Thank you for joining us. Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed during the first quarter, rushed out by first responders. The 24-year-old suffering cardiac arrest. John Schoenheider is live tonight in East Peoria with what medical professionals are saying uh, with how you can stay aware when the situation turns scary. John. Yeah, Amber and Tyler, the Bills tweeted out a little earlier today that Hamlin is still in critical care at a Cincinnati hospital with updates continuing to come through throughout the day. But it's also highlighting the need for awareness when it comes to cardiac arrest safety. According to the Red Cross, they tell us earlier today that every second counts. Frightening moments during what looked to be a tense game of Monday night football. And that is DeMar Hamlin. 24-year-old DeMar Hamlin collapsing without warning on the field. The Bills announcing it was a cardiac arrest episode. When someone collapses, go there and, and get as close as you can and check a pulse and see if they're breathing. And if they haven't, you start CPR for them. Local medical professionals urging public awareness of what to do. When this situation happens and we talk about how seconds do matter in our line of work, you want as many resources available. Experts say this was a unique situation compared to what normally may happen. Yes, this is an NFL game with a lot of resources available. Uh, this could happen pretty much everywhere. And you might not have the luxury of having those many resources um, so easily available. The amount of time to save a life is critical. With the heart no longer pumping blood to the brain, every moment matters. It's a matter of life and death. And when, when you have a full arrest, which means your heart's not beating and you're not breathing on your own, you're in a window of minutes. If you come across someone who's unresponsive, experts say first call 911, then perform CPR while waiting for a defibrillator to charge up. Even if you aren't trained, it benefits the victim to at least try. These uh, timely prompt interventions can actually increase the survival rate uh, almost double to triple. Continue on for as long as possible until first responders arrive. Knowing how to respond, they say, makes all the difference. It is that much more important that we have uh, a level of cognizance regarding this problem and uh, awareness about what needs to be done. Go. Now, Amber and Tyler, when it comes to a cardiac emergency, there are a couple different devices that can be used, like the life pack behind me. This is what emergency medical professionals will take to the scene with them in ambulances like this or a fire truck if it's equipped for paramedic supplies. But for most civilians, we'll be seeing devices like these, these AEDs that you'll see hanging up on walls or put away in cabinets. And the best part about it is that they're super easy to use because they tell you how to use them. As soon as you power it on, it will let you know as it's charging up 
And as soon as it's ready to go, it'll also announce that as well. So in the case of emergency, make sure you're continuing to do CPR and wait for a signal from the AED. From East Peoria, John Schoenheider for 25 News. Back to you guys in the studio.